An emergency alert. There is a global conflict being waged, which is only going to intensify. The price of gold today hit an all-time high as measured in U.S. dollars. That means the U.S. dollar hit an all-time low. I've heard it said before that when the price of gold rises, Mad Max approaches. We have a major incident at Offutt Air Force Base. This is the home of U.S. Nuclear Strategic Command. Now, the place was put under lockdown and shots were fired. There's censorship right now on social media with respect to the incident. More on that in just a moment. We have Russia drastically increasing their military size as well as their military budget, committing hundreds of thousands more troops today. We have a massive cyber attack in Russia. Germany shutting down consulates across Russia, including the exclave of Kaliningrad that many are suggesting, and I'll provide you the information today that suggests NATO is engaged in a clandestine operation to blockade Kaliningrad, as well as shuttering Russia out of the Baltic Sea. We have IAEA issuing more warnings about Ukrainian nuclear power plants. We have the ceasefire. I'm sure you know now the war is back on in Israel. We have Iran, Russia, China conducting joint military exercises in the Persian Gulf. We have a major uh, shipping company saying that they are no longer going to be able to send their cargo ships through the Suez Canal as a result of the hijacking of ships that's been taking place recently. Iran has once again threatened Israel as well as Hezbollah. We have to talk about an Iranian blockade of U.S. equipment in Iraq. We got to talk about the Rockstar Grand Theft Auto unveil on Tuesday, which I think is going to be perfectly timed to be a great World War III distraction. The Arctic is 6.83 degrees Celsius above average, which means that we are going to see some wild weather in the coming months ahead. We have the white lung story spreading like wildfire. We're going to talk about whether or not this is something we need to be concerned about. We also need to talk about the Russians who back in August were claiming that the U.S. was planning some additional biological hybrid warfare maneuvers. Again, that's from the Russians. That's not from me. And we also need to talk about Mr. Elon Musk. Every video we're talking about Elon Musk now, it seems. So again, the price of gold. You notice how quiet they're being in the media about this. The price of gold just hit an all-time high. That should be front page news on every economics website, but it isn't. Ask yourself why that might be the case. There's been consolidation at this new support level that's well above $2,000, I do believe, and understand that in order to move the needle in the gold markets, this is a $10 trillion market. I, I would say it's probably the largest market in the world for commodities, bigger even than oil, but don't quote me on that. But uh, these are big, big moves, and that means that the shit is hitting the fan, okay? Because once that price of gold starts ticking upwards, it is very hard to uh, bring back people's confidence in the system. Now, there was an incident at Offutt, Offutt Air Force Base. Not even a lot of media attention about this at all. I believe there was some uh, local news channels that were reporting on it, but basically... At the Stratcom gate tonight around 10 p.m., this was yesterday, out of an abundance of caution, the base was placed on lockdown. Once the incident was cleared by our defenders, interesting how we call them the defenders, it's just, it doesn't seem like the appropriate terminology to use. The lockdown was lifted at 10.30 p.m. That almost sounds like something you would hear them say in the Middle East. Uh, the incident is currently under investigation. Now, apparently, a car approached the gates and there were shots fired by these defenders, okay? And uh, I'm assuming if there were shots fired that whoever was in this vehicle was arrested. Now, maybe this was somebody that was just lost and didn't know their way around town, although I presume, I've never been to this place before, that a military base is pretty descript, and this is a place that you know you probably shouldn't be at, and why would they just start shooting at a car that was that's just randomly pulled up. That doesn't make sense. I'm sure if this was something like that, where it was just a person who accidentally approached the gates, this would be something that would be quite routine and wouldn't require uh, the firing of a weapon. 
What we do know right now is that we're entering the age of hybrid warfare. We're about to see the unleashing of sleeper cells on critical infrastructure on multiple fronts, whether they be from Russia, from Iran, from North Korea, from China. We are very likely to see an escalation in terms of asymmetry in that respect. So what exactly is happening here? Well, we're not going to know because on the Offutt Air Force Base Twitter page, only accounts who Offutt Air Force Base mentioned can reply. Now, you might be saying that that is just them using their discretion because they don't want to uh, create a forum for misinformation or disinformation. But it would be great if they could elaborate on why exactly there were shots fired. And this was reported by local media there. So it's not something we're making up. You can just go Google off at Air Force Base, shots fired, base put under lockdown. And this is not the first time it has happened. If anything has been demonstrated within the last two months, we've realized just how incompetent, uh, not two months, maybe the last 10 years, <laughs> let's get real here. The last 10 years have uh, indicated that we are an incompetent, uh, governed by incompetent people who are uh, overly complacent in their smug positions of privilege and authority and that they've let it go to their heads. And for that reason, security is a major, major issue. And these security oversights are going to be something we're going to be seeing more of in the near future. Now, NATO is apparently blocking Kaliningrad. In fact, I'm going to talk about other things first, and we'll save that for later. Russia is increasing its military size by another 170,000 people okay so this is going to bring their total armed forces to 2,209,130 units this coincides with a massive increase in spending i've heard estimates anywhere between 30 to 70 percent increase up to 390 billion u.s dollars which is a lot considering that Historically, the Russians would spend under $100 billion, and arguably, by some people's standards, they would say that they get a better bang for their buck than the U.S. military. So the fact that they're now spending half of what the U.S. military is spending and they don't have an equivalent amount of MIC bloat to deal with, that is a scary proposition for NATO who is currently shaking in their boots. Jan Stoltenberg on The Daily now is warning about the lack of ammunition that NATO has to bring to bear. Now, there's been a cyber attack on Russia. Metrics show a major outage on Russian internet provider Ob Telecom. The incident is the latest in a wave of cyber attacks attributed to the IT Army of Ukraine hacktivist group. And I can't show you the graph here today. I'm just doing this on the fly because it's a weekend and I got to hang out with the kids. But basically, this took down about 60 to 80 percent of the internet for this primary telecoms provider in Russia. The cyber attacks are starting to ramp up. I was speaking with a cybersecurity expert today who insists that we're about to see a major cyber incident. Now, everybody's making allusions to the WEF uh, propaganda video that was released last year that threatened that there's going to be a massive cyber attack. Maybe that's the case. I think it's really just a matter of time. You don't have to be Nostradamus to make that prediction, okay? Now, in terms of NATO's blockade of Kaliningrad and why this is so important, remember, we told you about the S-400s, which are being redeployed elsewhere on the battlefield. Now, there's this. The Ukrainian armed forces are testing the strength of Russian air defense systems, launching drones at facilities uh, of the Ministry of Defense and the Russian Navy. In June, the United States deployed six nuclear submarines armed with ballistic missiles to the Atlantic, giving Washington an advantage over Moscow in the event of a nuclear war. Although some would say that that's a debatable point and that they don't necessarily have an advantage due to Russia's more advanced uh, strategic systems in other respects that we've covered extensively on this channel before. In Latvia, they've announced the need to close the Baltic Sea to Russian ships. Denmark has announced the closure of the straits to Russian ships and the Estonians, Finns and Norwegians are initiating blockades of border points with Russia. 
um, including, yes, I said Finland already. Along with this, the head of the German Ministry of Defense, Boris Pistorius, announced the danger allegedly emanating from Kaliningrad, the rest of the Russian Federation, Belarus, in relation to Lithuania, initiating the dispatch of a tank brigade to, a, to initiate a blockade of that area. All the pieces are falling into place. And this is why the Germans are closing all of these consulates throughout Russia. Combat operations in the region and the seizure of Russian territories are also practiced during the Freezing Winds 23 exercise, which is currently just starting to wrap up in the Baltic Sea. It is important to note that the blocking of the Baltic for the Russian Navy is a possible step is, is possible with the help of small stock of mines, anti-ship missiles and reconnaissance drones. This would be viewed as a strategic threat to Russia, this sort of embargo, blockade, whatever you want to call it, and there most definitely would be a military response by the Russians. So time is of the essence. The German shuttering of consulates in numerous different locations, not the primary embassy yet, but of consulates is a harbinger for what is to come. Russia currently is lighting up Ukraine. According to Sergei Shoigu, the counter-offensive failure cost the Ukrainians 125,000 casualties. Now they are surrounding Advivka, and they've also recently taken back the town of Marian Marienka, which is a small town of around 10,000 people, but the momentum and the initiative is clearly in the hands of the Russians. There are claims of negotiations by Seymour Hirsch, uh, Back-channel communications between Zaluzhny, who is the commander of the Ukrainian armed forces, and the Russians, of course, the Ukrainians, deny this. Now Zelensky is saying, well, we could have elections, but the people don't want it. So it looks like we might see some domestic political turmoil unfold in Ukraine as well. The IAEA has, bring, has been bringing attention back to the nuclear power plant situation, okay? So the head of the IAEA has warned against strikes on nuclear power plants after an explosion damaged Kamalinsky nuclear power plant in Ukraine. Most people probably never even heard of this incident. A year ago, this would be headline news, something to think about. The explosion didn't directly hit the nuclear facility, but caused damage to the ancillary, ancillary buildings due to Ukraine shooting down two drones nearby. Russia also reported uh, drone activity near the Kursk nuclear power plant and claimed to have uh, thwarted a Ukrainian attempt at a terrorist attack. Now, I was speaking with a former member of the CIA today who believes that it's very likely that China is going to make their move on Taiwan before the Biden administration leaves office or before the election is conducted by hook or by crook, whether by legal means or by military means. So stay tuned. This is probably one of the best interviews I think we've ever conducted on the channel, and we're going to be releasing it next week. We go all over the map. We talk about we leave no geopolitical stone unturned. So please stay tuned for that. You are in for a treat in terms of information. We also have to talk about the ceasefire that was allegedly broken by Hamas. Now, is it a coincidence that this happened right after Blinken's visit to Israel in which he warned Netanyahu that he does not have months to uh, process this war, but only weeks? And lo and behold, a rocket is fired and all of a sudden they are back to full-scale war in the Gaza Strip. So, unfortunately, that short-lived reprieve, that ceasefire, may just have been a new, a new plateau uh, for what will likely be an even more serious escalation throughout the region in the not-so-distant future. Because Iran, China, and Russia are planning joint military exercises again in the Persian Gulf. They previously did this in the Gulf of Oman back in March of 20. 23 and Iran has confirmed that it has in fact received the Su-35 warplanes that are some of the most advanced warplanes that Russia currently has to offer. These are only Gen 4 warplanes but are still uh, widely used 
and are still considered a formidable aviational tool in these conflicts. We have the Mediterranean Shipping Company, the largest shipping company in the world, saying that we've decided not to transit goods through the Suez Canal due to threats from Yemen. Now, I have to do more research into this one. If this is true, then we're going to see a drastic increase in the price of goods that are shipped abroad. This is going to contribute to inflation. For some reason, there is still downward pressure on oil in spite of the fact that this turmoil has just flared up in the Middle East once again. It's really insane and it's scary that gold is going up, but oil is going down. I'm going to have to go and look back throughout the history books and see what the correlation is with gold and oil. I would presume as a commodity, when the valuation of the dollar is uh, depreciating, then commodities should elevate. But for some reason, it appears that the higher gold goes, the lower oil goes. But I think this is going to be very short-lived. I think a lot of people are banking on the U.S. to do one thing, to zig when it's actually going to zag. Now, Israel has threatened extrajudicial killings of all of the Hamas leaders around the world in other people's countries, openly putting it out there, which is insane to me, but saying that we are going to target and terminate all of the high-ranking Hamas officials around the world. Now, if you're somebody who's really pro-Israeli, whatever it is they're trying to do over there, you might be saying to yourself, great. But you also want to ask yourself, why aren't they doing that now? Are the guys who are going to be doing that on the front lines currently, are they currently preoccupied with something else? It would seem that if you wanted to really cut the head off the snake, you would do it during the war and not afterwards. And why would you announce it in the first place? Wouldn't that put you on bad terms with the countries that openly uh, harbor these individuals in their countries? Something to think about. Iran has threatened Israel. Uh, Amir Abdullahan, Iran's foreign minister, has said that resistance leaders last week in Beirut, in Beirut told me if I, uh, Israel resumes attacks, the response by resistance will be regrettable and more severe than witnessed before. Well, cue the fire. Israel has renewed its attacks. Iran has also allegedly attacked U.S. forces in Iraq once again. Iraq's popular mobilization forces, the 30th Brigade with ties to Iran, reportedly are blocking a U.S. convoy. The incident occurred at Al Namrud district in Mosul, signaling a dangerous escalation. This aggressive act triggers heightening or risk heightening U.S.-Iran tensions in the region. Sorry, guys, I don't have a teleprompter, okay? And I haven't been trained in the art of news anchorship and enunciation and all that stuff. So I apologize if I'm making spe speaking areas plus, areas, plus my printer is running out of ink, as you can see there. Anyways, this move reflects a worrying escalation of direct confrontations beyond the prior regular drone attacks. So now they're getting up close and personal, all right? We have Grand Theft Auto, the big unveil, much anticipated, coming next December. On December 5th, they're going to be unveiling the trailer, and I believe that this is almost so perfectly timed with the escalation of events around the world, because this isn't going to just be a video game. This is likely going to become its own platform in a way, I do believe, much like some of the other games in the Rockstar franchise have become, much like uh, the thing my kids play, Roblox, it's going to become its own universe. They're likely going to be employing artificial intelligence, possibly a uh, uh, not uh, augmented reality or virtual reality component to this. So I do believe this is going to be a massive distraction, which will be perfectly timed when things just start to escalate. So stay tuned for that. The Arctic is currently 6.83 degrees Celsius higher than normal. We're about to see some wild perturbations in the jet stream, and that's going to make for some wacky weather. And uh, just uh, FYI, if you're looking for a Christmas present for your spouse and she's a prepper or he's a prepper, make sure that you get yourself or you get them something that's going to last them a lifetime and is going to keep them alive 
this winter if the proverbial shit hits the fan. These are blue fox mitts. Every woman loves these, okay? And these are very rare. These are handmade here in Saskatchewan. Uh, many people uh, throughout history, of course, have relied on furs in order to keep them warm in the wintertime. And even in the Quebec ice storm that happened in 2000, many people who had furs like this were able to keep warm in their homes. Most homes don't have alternate heating systems. And uh, to have something like this, this is gonna be a family heirloom. It's gonna last forever, but they are in, in insanely limited supply here because these are all handmade. And I think most of these are already accounted for, but whatever is on the website are still there. We also have those in beaver, raccoon, uh, beaver, raccoon are great ones. Coyote is a great one. I think those are the only uh, ones that we have in stock right now. If you want something more cost effective, get yourself a pair of wool shoe liners. This is a cheap solution if you don't have warm boots. This is just something you should put in your boot. This insole will last a long time. This is real wool. It's going to last a lot longer than your standard uh, insoles that are made of synthetic materials. And uh, it's just a cheap fix. It's not going to, you know, turn your running shoes into a winter boot per se. But if you put some of these in your winter boot, if things get really bad, which they very well could, then you'll be able to uh, keep your feet warm. And for a lot of people, including myself, that's one of the first things that get cold. And if your feet get cold, then that's going to potentially put you out of commission. We also, I'm happy to announce, finally, our resident nuclear physicists have engineered more of the Geiger counters, which are specifically tuned and made for the primary purpose of a major World War III nuclear disaster. Most of the Geiger counters that you buy online are not tuned for that. We've done an extensive video of that before. These again are at limited supply because they are manufactured here in Canada, okay? So get those while the getting is good. In terms of the white lung uh, pneumonia story, mysterious pneumonia story, which is starting to pick up steam, even in the mainstream media, it started on the fringe, Recall that earlier this year, I believe it was January or February, we were talking about the imminent spread of some mysterious white lung disease. This was reported by the Epoch Times, who by many people's standards is a very biased uh, media source, a wing of the Falun Gong propaganda machine, the anti-China machine. That doesn't necessarily mean that everything they say is going to be false. It just means that you have to take it with a grain of salt. But sometimes in order to get the truth of the matter, you have to go to fringe websites like that that are willing to publish those stories. Now it's a roll of the dice. Most of the time they're gonna be untrue, but occasionally, you know, uh, broken clock is, is right twice a day. So anyways, is this going to be, you know, a major thing that's gonna trigger another lockdown? I highly doubt it because number one, people are just not gonna go for it. However, the irony here is that this is in fact infecting children and anything related to white lung is something that I wouldn't want my kids to get. So I think you're gonna have a lot of people voluntarily if the true, uh, if this is actually a dangerous illness. And I don't know about you guys, but my family has been struggling with sickness like crazy. I've been lucky, I got sick but I didn't have whatever sort of flu is going around. I didn't have the insane uh, cold that's going around. I had a bit of a cold, but it wasn't that bad. I did, certainly didn't have pneumonia. Um, with respect to this thing that's going around, as far as we know, there's no fatalities yet, but you know, I mean, anything can, can happen at this point in time. And the Russian Ministry of Defense, take this one with a big, big grain of salt, said back in August, they claimed that the U.S. Uh, manufactured the crises of 2019, 2020. This is what they say, not me. I'm just forwarding this information because for all we know, this could be projection and they could have been in fact been the ones to do it. Not saying that either. I'm just saying we got to keep our minds open at this point because every single person is lying to us. It does appear. Uh, now they're saying that they started to prepare for a new pandemic to enact global control, wh whatever that means. Rush claimed the U.S. created the blah, blah, blah pandemic and are planning on doing it again. Okay, well, I guess we'll see. Time will tell. I just want to share one final thought. 
as we've covered all the bases today, Elon Musk. Every day I'm talking about Elon Musk in some capacity. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. And I wrote this on Twitter today, and I think this just best summarizes my thoughts on the whole matter. I think Elon is a visionary. I think he's a guy who's an entrepreneur. He's trying to bring new technology to the masses. Unfortunately, it's all getting co-opted by the government. So it seems that everything Elon is a part of is co-opted by the military industrial complex from Starlink to SpaceX to Twitter. Soon military vehicles will have full self-driving. Why wouldn't they? Solar roofs and power walls will manage power consumption. The boring company that digs tunnels will dig a tunnel to Cheyenne Mountain. Your cyber truck or Raven Rock. Your cyber truck will drive you to the police station and Neuralink will likely monitor your thoughts. Interestingly enough, Tesla has a market capitalization of $750 billion. It pays no federal taxes in the United States and has no plans to do so. Meanwhile, each Tesla Model 3 that is being resold receives a federal subsidy of $7,500. Something to think about, isn't it? Now, I've always lauded Tesla as being an amazing company that is bringing manufacturing back to the United States. So again, this is not throwing shade on the entrepreneurial vision of Elon Musk. It's just saying we need to remain skeptical when we get this messiah complex with these technocrats. Elon Musk has been the only one who's been able to persistently pull it off. All the rest seem to fail. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section below, thanks for watching. Enjoy your weekend, and we will be back with more probably tomorrow, the way things are going.